We're gonna stick to the Scylla, use our ultimate. Stomp, stomp, she can't get away. We're gonna rotate back to the team fight. Dodgy pulls a few people. Scotty's not somebody we wanna fight right now, so we're just gonna dash through her. Try to stick to these people over here. We hit our two, Sobek dashes out. Chalk's pressuring our team, Scotty's left alone. We're gonna come in behind her, use our three, get the slow. Start using our basic attacks. And we're able to get the pick onto Scotty. Next, we're going to get our basics off, slowing the chalk, and Sobek goes down. What a do, Scooby Doo! It's your boy Shiny D Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Vamana as solo. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully, there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, Vamana is a pretty safe pick. He has a dash and an ultimate that allows him to regen a lot of health. So hopefully we can just survive in lane, level up, and rotate to mid and make an impact. So let's go ahead and review Vamana's kit. Vamana's one. Vamana's gonna sprint forward with his umbrella open. He's going to deal damage and knock enemies into the air. Vamana's two is a cone attack. Vamana's gonna use his umbrella, which is infused with armor, and deal some damage in a cone. Vamana's three is called umbrella ring. Vamana's gonna throw his umbrella in front of him. It's going to do a line attack, go a certain distance, and then return to Vamana, dealing damage both on the way there and on the way back. Enemies hit by this ability are gonna have their attack and movement speeds reduced by 25%, and the speed slow duration is going to last for three seconds. Vamana's ultimate, Vamana's gonna grow into an enormous giant for six seconds, gaining crowd control, immunity, protections, physical power, regeneration, and his basic attacks now deal damage to nearby enemies. Successful attacks on enemies while in your ultimate are gonna provide stacks of movement speed for three seconds. When Vamana is in colossal form, taking damage from enemy gods increases the duration, and Vamana can pass through player-made walls. You can cancel this ability at any time. So, it's gonna give you some protections, 15 at level one, 35 at level two. It's gonna have a health regeneration of 5% of your health every second. The movement speed is 3% that can stack up to 5 times, and the physical power at level 1 is 40, at level 5 is 100. The shield is 1% of your max health, plus 0.2 seconds. Vamana's passive. 20% of Vamana's physical protection is converted to physical power. So after the first wave, we're going to be making a play for the Totem of Ku. The Totem of Ku is going to give everyone on our team a little bit of gold, and it's also going to give everyone a little bit of mana. Imagine popping a mana pot for everybody on your team. With Vamana, we're going to level up our 3 at level 1, level up our 2 at level 2, uh, level up our 1 at level 3, and then we're going to max out our 3, max out our ultimate, max out our 2, and then max out our 1. With Vamana, your 3 abilities for damaging the minion wave, your 3 is definitely the safest. You can just throw it, it's going to be a line attack that goes out and then comes back to you. If you try to level up your 1, you're going to be using your dash to clear the minion wave and that puts you in a risky position. If you try to level up your 2, you have to step to like the side of the wave in order to tag the entire wave and this can be a little bit risky, especially in certain matchups. So leveling up the 3 is definitely the safest and most efficient way. I also believe it does the most damage. So with Amana, it's kind of a game of attrition. Once we get our ultimate, we are going to be pretty nasty. Amana's ultimate allows you to just regen so much. Chalk pops his 3, so now he's healing. This is probably not the best fight for us. We're out of potions in our health chalice. So we are ideally looking for around 1100 gold before we back. That way we can buy the tier 3 version of the attack speed boots. Right now we're kind of just using all of our abilities to clear the minions. My blue is up. My jungler is nowhere to be found, so we're going to make a play for the totem of Ku. While Chalk is cleaning up that wave. I'm surprised Chalk didn't try to poke me there. He just went for basic attacks, that's a little surprising. We're gonna go back to wave, use our three. We're completely out of mana, so we're just gonna kinda take it easy. We see Dodgy in the jungle, so we're gonna start falling back under tower. Trying to let Thonatos know, like, hey, need it, bud. 
I think Dodgy is already over that. Yep. So we're going to try to make a play. We don't have a whole lot of mana. We get our three off. We get the double tap onto Chalk. We're going to make a play for the mana because we desperately need it. We do have our dash, but that would be very aggressive. So we're just going to kind of keep pushing up. We have our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and use it. Start stomping on this Chalk. We're going to cancel our ultimate, use our three, and we're able to get the pick on the Chalk. Don't be afraid to cancel your ultimate with the mana. And that is a great example of when you should cancel, so that way you can get an ability off and get the pick. We have plenty of money for our boots, so we're just going to clear this wave and then go ahead and watch this Thanatos go for the play. Very nice. We do need to back, but we kind of hung out a little bit too long. Nope, we're just going to play it safe. Yeah. We're just going to back. We don't want to miss any minions, so we're going to go ahead and get the Ninja Tabai and then teleport back to lane. So most solo laners are going to be buying the Teleporting Glyph. The Teleporting Glyph allows you to get back to lane without missing any farm. So the minions didn't really meet in the middle, but we're still here. I think we missed two melee minions, maybe one melee minion. Now that we have our attack speed boots, we're going to want to try to land some basics on Chalk as often as possible. Unfortunately, Chalk has heals built into his kit, so this is kind of an unfavorable trade for us, and it will be for a while. Our heals in our kit are only in our ultimate, but it's really fat heals, so we just got to use our ultimate at the right time. Just getting some basics off while Chalk's going for the minions. Hit him with our three. Get the double tap, that's going to slow him. We're going to charge him. We're going to go ahead and use our two. Use all of our abilities. Our abilities are on cooldown, so now we're going to use our ultimate and try to stomp him. We're going to have to fall back, though. We almost got him, but not quite. Dodgy's here. Uh, we're going to start wiggling around. Our blue buff is up. Thanatos hit his speed and then left. So that's interesting. I guess I'm getting my own blue. Dodgy's here. She's on the totem. If she was smart, she would have been pressuring me instead of going for the totem. After going into Ninja Tabai, we're going to be going into Berserker Shield. So we just bought the tier 1 version of Berserker Shield. Our blue is up, so we're going to start working on this. Berserker Shield, whenever we get the tier 3 item, it's going to provide us 40 physical power, 30 physical protections, 20% attack speed, and 10% penetration. It has a passive that if you drop below 40% HP, you're going to become Berserk for 5 seconds. While you're Berserk, you're going to gain 20 power and an additional 20% attack speed. With Vamana, we're going to be going kind of an attack speed, frostboundy build. That way we can slow enemies and constantly be attacking them in our ultimate. We're kind of playing for our ultimate with this build. We're going to try to get some basics onto Chalk, but he wins kind of any trade because he can just heal up. We can too, but at the cost of our ultimate, so it costs us more to heal than it does for Chalk to just press his 3. We get our 2 off onto him, but we're pretty weak. We do not have any health potions left in our Chalice. Chalk's making a play for Totem of Q. There's not too much we can do to contest. So we're just going to kind of focus on the wave still. Chalk definitely has lane pressure right now, even though we are a higher level. He just hit 8. Well, while our minion sneaks into the tower, we're going to go ahead and make a play for the Totem of Kill. And we're going to get out of here. Chalk just used his ultimate, but we were able to dash out of it before he was able to get it to connect on us. Now we're being super greedy and trying to clear this wave before backing. We need like another 15 seconds on our teleport glyph. Right here is a very unfortunate thing. Chalk is zoning me from the minions. So I just saw an archer go down, but I did not get any gold or XP. So we're going to go ahead and back. We don't have enough money for Berserker Shield, but we are going to pick up the tier 2 version of it and then teleport back to lane. I believe Chalk is going into Breastplate, and he went with the Power Boots. So with the Power Boots versus the Attack Speed Boots, Chalk is going to win the sh short fights, but we might win the long fights. And what that means is that Chalk can just throw his abilities and then be done with the fight. So 
whereas we kind of need a longer fight where we can potentially dodge his abilities, potentially stick to him and basic attack him for a while. It's going to take us a little bit longer to kill him than it is for him to kill us. The attack speed transfers over to Vamana's ultimate, and so that's the reason we're going into attack speed. There's not a whole lot you can do when a giant Vamana is charging you, just smacking the ground consistently. We're going to go ahead and kind of contest this totem of kill using most of our abilities. I believe we have it. Yep, we're able to get the totem of kill. We're going to fall back. Chalk is going to win these fights right now. Vamana is a super safe character because of his dash and because of his ultimate. If we fall into red health, we can just pop our ultimate, and then we're almost unkillable. Like, it takes a lot to kill a Vamana in his ultimate. Anti-heal does affect Vamana in his ultimate. So if you are trying to counter him, make sure you're picking up some anti-heal. Maybe not right away in the early game, but, you know, mid to late game, you definitely want to snag some. Still just using our three on the wave. Our umbrella ring which is a combination of Umbrella and Boomerang. We're gonna go ahead and just kinda dash away. Chalk's missing. No totem, so he just comes right back to lane. Now we have enough money for our Berserker Shield. Totem of kill, just respawn. And I also realize I don't need to sit in my tower. I can just run up, clear the wave, and then dash away. So we're gonna do that. We have a decent amount of money, so we're probably just going to back. Yeah. Even though we don't have our teleport glyph, we're just going to back. We cleared the wave, so hopefully we won't miss too many minions. We're going to be going into the tier 1 of Frostbound Hammer. Frostbound Hammer is a very cheesy, cheesy item. It's so annoying if you're going against it. Frostbound is going to provide 25 power. It's going to provide 300 health. And it has a passive that if you land your basics on an enemy god, it's going to reduce their movement speed by 30%. And 20% if it's ranged. And it's going to have the enemy's attack speed reduced by 15% for 1.25 seconds. So if you land a basic attack, they're slowed by 30% with Vamana, which is pretty ridiculous. In Vamana's ultimate, you're going to be slowing them by 30%. And then you're also going to be gaining stacks of 3% movement speed. So you're going to get faster while they remain slowed. We clear the wave, we get our two off onto the chalk. Getting some basics off. Right now we have full health, we have full health potion, so now we're trying to bop, trying to get some damage off on them. We set a ward up, I don't think we meant to do that. We take a little bit of too much poke right there. We miss our dash. We're going to go ahead and clean up the minion wave. Get a little bit of poke. So we're actually clearing the minion waves before Chalk. It's just that he can heal. We used our ultimate because we were running a little low on health. And now we're full health. Gotta love that Vamana ultimate. We get the totem of Q for our team. It's 25 gold plus some mana for everyone on the map. Chalk's missing. I'm assuming that he's on his blue buff. Right here, it looks like we potentially could rotate. So Thanatos has kind of been leaving the right jungle alone. So I'm going to fall back and pick up these harpies. Normally, I like to leave this farm for the jungler. But Thanatos has been skipping the right side of the jungle. So we're going to clean it up. Just ignore Chalk. Go ahead and clear the minion wave. We're gonna get a few basics off, but we're really not looking to fight him. So Chalk picked up Contagion early. I think he went with Contagion instead of Breastplate. Which I feel like the 25% anti-heal on Contagion is not gonna drastically affect Vamana's ultimate. And we don't have any lifesteal outside of that, so I would not build Contagion first item whenever you're going against a Vamana. We're kind of just wiggling around. We're kind of just... He can do his own thing. <laughs> we're 
we're trying to proxy a wave. We decide not to proxy the wave, so we just dash away. Chalk's gonna chase us instead of going for his blue buff. We do have our ultimate, so we're kind of just baiting. Chalk uses his ultimate, and now we're just gonna fight him. We're gonna fight into this. We're gonna go for the dodgy because dodgy does not have the protections. Dodgy uses our ultimate. We do not have beads, so we're gonna kind of wiggle and then dash away. Bonatos is able to clean up the dodgy. We're gonna go ahead and back. We have our teleport glyph online. And we also have enough money for the Frostbound Hammer. Looking at the enemy team comp to figure out which relic I want to go. It looks like I was undecisive, so I didn't pick a relic. Taking a look now, we were thinking about beads for the dodgy. We do have a CC immune ultimate, but if she catches us while our ultimate is down, she's going to pull us every time. Look at this Frostbound. He can't get away. He can't get away. Frostbound is so cheesy. We're gonna go ahead and clean up the totem of kill. Go pick up our blue buff. Clear a wave and then maybe invade the enemy blue buff. Basically, once you land a basic attack on somebody with Frostbound, they can't run away. You can just keep landing basic attacks on them. We get our two off, doing some good damage to that dodgy. We're going to go ahead and clean up the enemy blue buff. That's going to be some additional XP for us. And if we down it after 15 seconds, oh, we did like a second before 15 seconds. So this season, there was a problem. Oh, we get ulted. We're just going to dash out. We do take a little bit of damage right there. Our ultimate was down. We just now get our ultimate. So if we're really pressured, we can just ult and we're pretty much fine. Earlier this season, there was an issue with invading enemy camps. It was just kind of too good of a strategy to not do. So the developers added some functionality within the game to help make invading not as effective and kind of encourage players to stick to their own half of the map. One of these changes was if you kill an enemy camp before 15 minutes, you're going to get reduced gold and XP. So if we kill an enemy red buff, it's going to be worth less than killing our red buff. After the 15 minute mark, it is about the same. In fact, it is the same. It's not about. Another thing that they did to help prevent invades was adding the jungle shrine curse. So if you're over there before the game start, before like a minute into the game, you're going to have your movement speed, attack speed, and power all reduced. We're sticking to chalk. Just getting our basics. We're not going to fight him into tower right here. We're gonna take a little bit of poke. If we could make it look like we're killable and get Chalk to step out of tower, we could absolutely burn him down. I call it out to the team. Chalk is missing. We're gonna go ahead and hit our blue buff, go clear a wave, and then we might rotate to the team fight. Right now we have the option, we could proxy a wave, or we could go to the team fight. We're going to proxy a wave so that way we have even more time before we have to worry about rotating back to right lane or to the solo lane. After going into Frostbound, we're going to be going into Shogun's Kasari. We caught Ch Chalk in jungle. He popped a thorn, so we're going to back it up. Dodgy's on us. We're going to go ahead and ult. Turn around and start trying to kill this dodgy. Frostbound, baby, frostbound. Oh, she used her dash, good for her. We miss our three. We're gonna dash up, cone attack, and we're able to get the dodgy. Chalk's here. I don't think we can fight this because we do not have our ultimate. If we had our ultimate, I would fight this all day long. Scylla rotated over, we're going to dash through. We're able to dodge a decent amount right there, but we get rooted by the Scylla. And unfortunately, we go down. Not sure if they called missing mid, wasn't really paying attention to the comms. But after going into Frostbound, we are going to be going... Let me talk about why we died there. We got two people pushing us, Dodgy ulted us, so when we were forced... Maybe not forced, we maybe could have just eaten it and then ulted, but... To prevent getting pulled by the dodgy totem, we used our ultimate. While we were in our ultimate, we were like, we can kill dodgy. 
So we turn around and we start fighting a 1v2. And it's favorable. We're about to get her, but then she dodges. She uses her 2 to get a little bit of distance away from us. So then we use our dash aggressively to get closer to the dodgy, farther up into the enemy side of the map. While all this is going on, Scylla is able to rotate over. It's the cripple from Scylla that really ruined us in that situation. Oh, look. More work for you to do. One thing we could have done is use our ultimate and just backed up. Use our ultimate, poke dodgy out, and then turn our attention to chalk once we realize that dodgy's gotten away. I think maybe the big brain play would have been to just eat the dodgy ultimate, let them start attacking me, and then ult them while they think they have the advantage. Either way, we're still doing all right. After going into Frostbound, we're gonna be going into Shogun's Kasari. Shogun's Kasari is gonna provide us 60 magical protections, 20 MP5, 10% cooldown, and 20% crowd control reduction. Crowd control reduction is CC. So if you get stunned for a second and you have 20% crowd control reduction, you're only gonna be stunned for 0.8 seconds. It also has a passive that allied gods within 70 units are gonna have their attack speed increased by 25%. So we're increasing our attack speed, we got our magical protections online, we got some more cooldown, and we also got the crowd control reduction. After going into Shogun's Kasari, we're going to be going into Soul Eater. Once Soul Eater is evolved, it's going to provide us 35 power, 15% lifesteal, 10% pen, and 10% cooldown. It has a passive that your abilities are going to give you 20% of the damage that you dealt as lifesteal. We're going to stick to the Scylla, use our ultimate, stomp stomp, she can't get away. We're going to rotate back to the team fight. Dodgy pulls a few people. Scotty's not somebody we want to fight right now, so we're just going to dash through her. Try to stick to these people over here. We hit our two. Sobek dashes out. Chalk's pressuring our team. Scotty's left alone. We're going to come in behind her, use our three, get the slow. Start using our basic attacks. And we're able to get the pick onto Scotty. Next, we're going to get our basics off, slowing the chalk. And Sobek goes down. Now we have the option of pushing a lane. We should just march up mid and go for the tier 2 tower. And the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel out. And if this video helped you out, be sure to check out the channel and subscribe for more content. Thank you for stopping by. The stats will be posted in just a moment. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.